So five says find the maximum volume of a rectangular box inscribed in the unit sphere. You got a box conceivably, not necessarily a cube. X, Y, and Z. Though maybe it ends up being a cube when you maximize the volume. That, that, that would be what you would think would happen. The volume is a function of X, Y, and Z. It's X times Y times Z. It's a function of three variables. It's inscribed inside the unit sphere. So the corners are touching the unit sphere. And do they say it's centered at the origin? I think that's the assumption, is that it's centered at the origin. Uh, that does make things technically a little tricky here as far as the coordinates of these things go. I guess if you thought about it in terms of the coordinates of the point on the box that's in the... octant, instead of quadrants, in three dimensions you have octants. There's eight of them. The octant where x, y, and z are all positive would be this corner right there. Uh, I should have labeled x, y, and z differently. Okay, this is now x. That's y, and this is z still. Uh, the coordinates there would be x over 2, y over 2, z over 2. And they'd have to satisfy the equation of the unit circle. x over 2 squared plus y over 2 squared plus z over 2 squared equals 1 squared. Square those things, you're going to get a bunch of fours in the denominator. So this is equivalent to x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals four after you multiply everything by four. So we're not on the sphere of radius two, we're on the sphere of radius one, but if the box is centered at the origin, again, the coordinates of that point are gonna be, be a bunch of X divided by twos. And effectively, this is like your constraint. This is essentially your G of X, Y, Z function. I mean, you could subtract four to both from both sides, but it doesn't really matter because the derivatives would be the same either way. I could take G of X, Y, Z to be X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared, or that function minus four. But you want to use Lagrange multipliers to solve for where this function is going to be maximized subject to this constraint. You got this equation that needs to be true. You also want the constraint equation to be true. You also want this to be true. Gradient of F consists of differentiate with respect to X, get Y, Z. Differentiate with respect to Y, get X, Z. And differentiate with respect to Z, get X, Y. Equals lambda times the derivative of these things. And I'll go, I'll go ahead and multiply times lambda right away. Two lambda X comma two lambda Y comma two lambda z. So the resulting scalar equations are yz equals two lambda x, xz equals two lambda y, xy equals two lambda z. And you also again want the constraint equation to be true. You want that to be true. That's the system of four equations and four unknowns to solve for x, y, z, and lambda. The value of lambda itself doesn't matter, but you do need to use it to find the other values. It'll equal y, z over 2x. It'll equal x, z over 2y. It'll also equal x, y over 2z. By symmetry, it should seem like X, Y, and Z should all be the same. By symmetry, what should we do with this? I mean, we could take one of these equations and for example, solve it for X in terms of the other things, cross multiply. 
uh, like 2y squared z equals 2x squared z. So you could write z equals, hmm, this does get tricky. Uh, probably we'd want to rewrite it like this. 2y squared z minus 2x squared z equals 0. Factor out of 2z. None of these things are going to be 0, which also means you don't have to worry about dividing by 0. So since z can't be 0, this means y squared equals x squared, which is equivalent to y equaling the absolute value of x, y is plus or minus x. Similarly, you would get, get x is plus or minus y, or y is plus or minus z, and x is plus or minus z. Yeah, the x, y, and z all have to be positive lengths. That's true. I was taking them to be lengths to begin with. So effectively, you were saying they're all the same. X, Y, and Z are all the same, which then means you can take this X equals Y equals Z. I guess I am completely finishing the problem here, which then means you can replace Y with X and Z with X and get ultimately three X squared equals four. So X squared is four thirds and X is square root of that, which will be two over root three, or if you prefer two root three over three. And Y and Z will be the same thing. Those will be the locations the values of x, y, and z that'll maximize v. It's not clear that it's a maximum, but evidently it will. You can plug them all in here and find the maximum volume. You'll get, in fact, let's do it as true over root three. Plug them all in. So you're, you're cubing that thing. Looks like this is the maximum volume. And X, Y, and Z are all the same, so it is a cube. <laughs>